Now that Weathering Waves is giving us another free 5 star, every player has an amazing opportunity to make their account really strong right from the start. So today, we're going to look at what each of these standard 5 star characters can offer for your account to see which ones you should be getting on your account for your free 5 stars. And also at the end of the video, I am going to talk about my personal choices for my free 5 stars. So I definitely do recommend you all stick around till then because I am going to give my thoughts on why I made the specific choices that I did make. So starting out here firstly with uh, Jun Sin. She is a all-rounder kind of character which is a very interesting thing I feel like when it comes to uh, you know, some of the gacha games I've played because she can pretty much do it all. You know she has shields, she can do some damage, she can, you can run her as a kind of DPS build. Um, she has, you know, crowd control things with gathering enemies together. She has, uh, I believe she has a buff. She has, um, a self heal on herself. So she can do a lot when it comes to the team, but she ends up being in the situation of she's not like super excelling in any particular area when compared to how other characters are. So it is something that's important to keep in mind, but I do think that, uh, John Sen is going to be extremely good for not only beginner players, but also people who just want to like farm the overworld efficiently and deal with those, you know, standard enemies that can be, you know, brought in with her, you know, crowd control. And it also is important to note too, that her skill does also have a, uh, invincible counter with it. So because you do get invincibility frames on it, if you're dealing with either like a mechanic that you're not super familiar with or something you just don't want to deal with because it might be annoying whether it be for you or your team comp or something along those lines you can just use Jansen's skill to just kind of get through that mechanic and not even really have to worry about it so i think she does have some value right now and i think that her value is going to go up in the future once we start seeing you know other characters come out and see people you know want to do specific team comps depending on you know what they might need for those team comps uh, John Sen will be able to fit into pretty much any kind of spot very well for those. Then next up we have Kalcharo and he is a main DPS kind of character and the 5 star I have the most experience with since I did pull him for my novice banner 5 star. And his damage is very strong and he is you know very much an on field DPS you can't get a lot of combos a lot of uh, great hits in with his attacks. and. Something that I personally like about him is that he is very active when it comes to his gameplay. He's not one of those characters where it's kind of like you just do a couple of attacks and then you switch. He is someone who wants to get a lot of attacks in because you can get a ton of damage through his uh, resonance scale, his resonance liberation, and you can just get a ton going with him. And I'm not gonna lie, he is the coolest of the standard five stars by far, you know, design wise. And I do think that his performance is going to be insanely good throughout the game. Not to mention, if, you, if you're like me and you want to go for Yinlin when she comes out in a few weeks from now, he's going to work amazing with Kalcharo, and that is probably going to be one of, if not the best team in the game when that happens in the second half of 1.0. So Kalcharo does have a ton of value there. Now, if you're not, you know, as you know, hype about a character, a character like Kalchar, there are two other DPS options that we will get into with these standard five stars. But next up, I want to talk about Verena before we get to those DPSs. Now, Verena is a support and healer kind of character, and she is currently the best support in the game. She has team-wide heals and can also buff the team with uh, very small amounts of uh, on-field time. So that can make her work very well with characters that do want to be on the field a lot to do their damage because Verena's you know, buffs and whatnot, they do last for a long time. I believe one of her buffs is 20 second duration, another one is 30 seconds, which is a pretty solid amount of time for you to get your main DPS a lot more you know, field time and have them do a lot more damage as well. And she does also have a skill that will allow her to protect a party member from uh, fatal damage once every 10 minutes. Probably shouldn't be something that's super crazy that you have to use a lot. I mean, you can't really use it a lot since it's every 10 minutes, but you know, it's a nice little thing to have, I feel like. And overall, in terms of support, I think she is, you know, the best in the game right now. And if you want you know, a character to compare her to, she's basically just a premium Baija. Because I think a lot of the things that Baija can do through her, um, through her, through her dupes, Farina can do just add no dupes. 
and probably slightly better as well just being a five star and since you do need multiple teams for the end game i believe it's three teams for weathering waves you do you know we will benefit a ton from having an extra supporting character and since verena is the best of the support characters right now she definitely is you know very worthy of being you know a five star i think very worthy of selection as well then next up we have ling yang who is a main dps kind of role and he has a very unique playstyle. You do get to test him out in his companion quest, which is cool, but his playstyle, rather than being, you know, like just typically like attacking characters like Alcharo does, for example, or John Shin, Ling Yang, he focuses on being in the air, which creates a whole nother kind of playstyle for you, where instead of just, you know, doing your normal attacking and dodging on, um, you know, on the ground, he will, you know, launch enemies up. And we'll launch like, you know, non-elite enemy, non-elite or boss enemies up and be able to just kind of combo them in the air. He kind of, he can kind of like fly as well. And really just, it really just creates a different kind of experience because, you know, aerial enemies, you know, they can't really do much to you. And you have these new types of like combos that you can do with him because he's the only character that can fly like that. And his damage is going to be, you know, pretty solid. But in the fact of him being entirely, you know, wanting to be in the air all the time, you might run into some issues with his consistency overall, as well as just being able to, you know, be able to parry and stuff like that. Um, or not, not necessarily parry, but like, you know, get his combos as efficiently because some, you know, certain hitbox things might not be as consistent for him. And with that, you might lose out on some damage. Plus, unlike Kalcharo, he, he currently, from what we know, does not have a like insanely good support coming up or insanely good hybrid co character coming up like Kalchara has for Yinlin. So Ling Yang might not be as great as Kalcharo in terms of where we are right now, but we don't know if you know he's going to get something in the future that could put him on the same level, if not be better. But in terms of just by himself, his damage is going to be still very solid as well. Then lastly, for the standard five stars, we have Encore. And Encore, she is going to be a main DPS and also does have a, you know, a very interesting playstyle overall because I do know that for characters, we have like our shorter range characters, but then we have some longer range characters. Encore does a kind of mix of the two where normally in battle, she's going to be a ranged character, but when you use her ultimate to enhance herself, she becomes a melee character. So to play Encore, she is going to be a bit more of a higher skill level character because you are going to have to you know quickly switch between two different types of playstyles when using her. And, you know, it does make the most sense to focus in on when her, she has her ultimate up so you can get the most damage out of it because she's going to do more damage when she's in that melee ultimate state than when she is in the, you know, just her standard state doing her ranged attacks. And her damage, you know, similarly to Ling Yang and Kalcharo uh, on her own is very good. And once again, you know, she does have the same kind of thing I mentioned with Ling Yang where there's no like dedicated hybrid character for her yet. But once that does happen, I can see Encore becoming significantly better like Kalcharo is going to be when Yinlin comes out. But the one thing to focus on uh, for Encore and the one thing to kind of worry about is when you don't have her ultimate up, you're not really able to parry because she is you know, a farther range character. And with just the way her attacks work, you're not able to parry with it. I, I haven't actually gotten the chance to use Encore yet. So I don't know, you know all the specifics about it and haven't experienced it myself, but not being able to parry while it, I don't think it's the most like detrimental thing in the world ever, especially if you're a more casual player. But at the same time, if you do care about being as efficient as possible, you could be limiting yourself gameplay wise if you, you aren't able to parry with your main DPS. So I think that also is something that's important to keep in mind here. So now you know, comes the question, now that we've gone over all the characters, who should I pick for my account? Now, remember, we do have three different ways to get a five star very early in the game. Firstly, we have the Novice Convene, which within 50 pulls, you'll get a five star. It's a random one, so I definitely recommend players to do this first. Then you get the Beginner Convene um, right after the Novice Convene, where it, within 80 pulls, you get a five star that you select. And then as of the 26th of May, we are getting a five star selector ticket, which will be given to every new player until the game's one year anniversary. And from that, you just pick a character and you just get them from the five stars. So I did kind of, you know, put the characters into what I think um, in terms of like levels of priority. 
when it comes to you know just overall performance in the game and how, what I think of them as characters right now but before I explain these I just want to say that if you you know are playing the game a little more casually you're not really caring about like meta or anything which honestly I don't think you need to care about meta that much for Wuthering Waves as long as you understand how the game works and how to make your characters perform as good as they can you just pick who you want at the end of the day because I feel like you're going to get way more enjoyment from a game like Wuthering Waves if you're playing characters that you enjoy as opposed to being like oh this character is good so I have to pick them so, yeah, but in terms of who has the highest value right now, I think in my first priority tier, these are going to be the characters that I find the most value in, which are going to be Verena and Calcharo. Uh, Verena, as I said before, is best support in the game right now, and because we need multiple teams for the Tower of, Ad of Adversity endgame, having Verena here is going to be very useful for you to have on one of your teams. Plus, also, her buffs are going to be extremely good. Then Calcharo... Yo, know, sure, as I said, Lin, uh, Yinlin is going to make Calcharo perform a lot better, but even without her, he still is a very strong character, you know, running him with some other, like, supports as well can still do some very solid damage, and I do think that right now, because you don't have, like, a kind of specific play style with him, as opposed to the other DPSs that we talked about, he is going to perform, I think, the most consistently of the three, like, main DPS kind of characters. Then in my second priority tier, I have Johnson, and this is mainly just because while she's an all-rounder, you know, sure she doesn't excel in any like specific area, but at the same time, that's going to lead her to be able to kind of adapt to where, you know, people's accounts or the meta is going to go at any particular moment. Because if there's a ton of very solid DPS characters that a lot of people have, then you can run her more of like a support role if that works for your account. But if you have a lot of support and you don't have many damage dealers, you can run her as a more of a damage dealer. So she definitely does have a ton of potential to sort of like adapt to whatever's happening in terms of people's accounts and the meta. So I think she has a ton of potential. Now, I don't know if I'd recommend her as much as Kalchar and Verena, but... I think she still is going to be insanely good for your account. Then, uh, for the last tier here, now they are the lowest tier, but at the same time, I do think that they are very good and do have a lot of potential to be very good in the future as well, being Encore and Ling Yang. And the reason they're down here is because while they can do similar kinds of damage as Kalcharo, I feel like they really just need something that is going to make them stand out a bit more, like Kalchara is going to be getting Yin Lin. Once they get a character like that, then I can definitely see them having more value. But then again, these two are also the ones that have the more unique playstyles. So if you are going for a character that, you know, if you are going for these characters, just understand that they're going to have different playstyles than like your average kind of DPS, but they can still perform extremely well. So really just, you know, it depends on what you are going to enjoy. But now for the final segment here to talk about who I I'm going to be picking for my five stars so thankfully i was lucky enough to get kalachara from the novice convene so i didn't have to worry about getting him then for my beginner convene which i'm about like 40 or 50 pulls away from hitting pity on it to get uh, my five star i did select john shin from what we use in her in the story a little bit she looked very fun plus she just has a really cool design so i yeah i definitely do want to go for her then for the limited five, uh, not limited, the uh, five star selector ticket that we're going to get, um, I'm going to be picking Farina because I do think that having a support is going to be extremely good in the long run. Plus, um, with, you know, the gacha games I've played, supports do stand the test of time a lot better in these kind of gacha games as opposed to DPSs. So I think Farina is going to be a very strong pick for me. But yeah, that is my overall guide and overall thoughts on the standard five star selectors that we're going to be getting and you know, the free five stars that we get throughout the early stages of Wuthering Waves. Let me know who you plan on picking or who you picked already with your, uh, your free five stars. But I want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed and want to see more content from me, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. The support is greatly appreciated. But with that, everyone, I will see you all next time.